why don't we begin? Um, so it is uh, 702, Wednesday, uh, September 22nd. Are you recording, Jack? We are recording, okay. We are recording. And seeing All right. Well. All right, great. So welcome to the Arlington Housing Authority regular board meeting. Um, a roll call on uh, Metropolis. You're on mute, Nick. Here. Uh, Joanne Preston? Here. God Talinian? Here. And Fiorella Badilla? Here. Okay. Um, then let's begin. Um, we'll go over public participation guidelines and we get to that section. I'll read that again. Um, so, uh, interim executive director's report. Jack? All right. So, um, just as a reminder, our staff are continuing to adhere to the town of Arlington's mask mandates and notices are posted at each development informing residents of the town's guidance related to this. Um, in regards to the flu clinics, um, we're very grateful that the Arlington Council on Aging conducted flu clinics at Drake Village and Winslow Towers this past month. Unfortunately, the flu clinic scheduled for Cusack Terrace and Chestnut Manor had to be canceled due to supply issues. The Council on Aging has informed us that the next flu clinic will take place on September 30th, 2021 at Town Hall. Notices from the Council on Aging indicating the schedule in the schedule change and location change have been posted at Chestnut Manor and Cusack Terrace. The Council on Aging has indicated that transportation will be available for those that need it. Uh, the window replacement and building envelope repair project at Winslow Towers is moving, it's continuing to move along well, um, and we're nearing um, the final phase. Uh, the property manager, Lynn Selvin, has continued to communicate schedule changes to residents. We hope to have a start date for the fire pump replacement project within the next week. Uh, this should not affect residents, but if it does, they will be properly notified. Um, the ADA bathroom project for Winslow Towers and Chestnut Manor community rooms is currently out to bid. And the bid should be coming in. The bids close at the end of this month. Just at um, the balcony resurfacing project has begun at Chestnut Manor. Uh, the property manager, Caitlin Roberts, has been communicating the schedule to residents as well as following up with residents that still need to clear off their balcony. Uh, we want to thank the residents that have, um, you know, adhered to our our guidance and cleared their balconies, and we'll continue to work with those that have not. Uh, we hope to have a start date for the roof replacement project at CUSAC Terrace in the next week or so. Um, and we actually will be meeting with, um, with the design team, the contractor, and our project manager from DHCD um, tomorrow, really. So I should have some more news very soon. Um, as soon as we do get confirmation related to when the project will begin, the property manager, Caitlin Roberts, will notify the affected residents where they can park during the duration of the project. Uh, Caitlin and the maintenance representatives met with USAC Terrace residents this past month to discuss the project, answer questions, and provide detailed guidance related to parking. Um, the Creative Placemaking Committee met this past month with DHCD and the design team to discuss the project and tour the property at Drake Village. All parties were excited about the, possi about the possibilities at Drake Village, and we hope to have more news about that related, more news related to that soon. Um, also at Menotomy Manor, we are very excited about the potential ARPA funding that the Housing Authority could receive from the Town of Arlington. Uh, we will continue to work with the Town to ensure that our needs um, continue to be communicated to them as they um, continue to move through their process. We hope to have more information related to this at the October board meeting. Additionally, I've scheduled a meeting with the residents of Menotomy Manor in October uh, for them to be able to discuss capital needs in order that we can continue to engage and receive feedback we plan to do this at all the developments throughout the course of the year. We feel that this will assist us as we begin to review and formulate our capital improvement plan for next year. Um, in regards to Verizon, uh, we are aware of the letters that residents received from Verizon indicating that their service will end on October 26, 2021. We have expressed our disappointment and, and concern related to this letter to the select board and representative Garbley's office. Also, there seems to be a misconception being perpetuated from Verizon that switching to fiber optics would be an easy fix. Uh, before we decide to sign an agreement with Verizon, there are multiple factors that need to be considered and addressed. These concerns include, but are not limited to, considering the health of our residents given COVID-19 and the invasiveness involved in this project, considering the cost of this project to the Housing Authority, as well as considering how, how the switch from copper to fiber optic will affect our residents' life alert systems, and ability to connect with emergency services during a power outage. 
In order to address our concerns, we have scheduled a meeting with Verizon representatives on Tuesday, September 28th. We hope that they will consider reconsider ending services on October 26th. However, as a precautionary measure, we will also remind residents that RCN and Comcast provide services in our building. Additionally, uh, this past week, uh, there were some, some issues with the, uh, with the office phone line, which was not, which was not related to the Verizon um, letters that went out. There was a cyber attack to the uh, VoIP system that we use for our internet phone to the op office. Uh, since then, our IT service has been able to correct the issue and uh, make us more resilient in the future. Uh, but just, although it is a, it's not an acceptable uh, fact that they went down, it was an issue that was um, experienced by local housing authorities throughout the region. So it was, um, it was not just us. And, um, we are happy that it has been dealt with, but, and we are happy that we were able to find some additional methods for residents to communicate uh, maintenance requests if something similar to happen in the future. And that's why those notices went out. Uh, two residents. Uh, unit inspections will be held at the Hauser Building, Chestnut Manor, and Cusack Terrace next week. Uh, we will be using an outside service again. The inspections will be done in accordance with local, state, and federal uh, COVID-19 guidance and restrictions. Um, in regards to laundry management service, the board will be reviewing the proposal tonight. Um, we hope to have a timeline related to installation of the new machines from Automatic Laundry soon. Automatic Laundry will also be providing instruction sheets and has indicated that they are willing to come on site to answer questions and provide some instruction and information related to the machines and their services. Our property managers are available. Additionally, on this note, and in the interim period while we wait uh, for the, these new machines to be installed, um, our property managers are available to provide change for residents that are having difficulty getting quarters. Residents that are interested in this should schedule an appointment with their property manager. In regards to the grievance panel, we are still in the process of confirming the rotating members of the panel. Mm -hmm. Members will include a tenant representative, a housing authority representative, and a disinterested party. We have requested each of the tenant associations to elect a resident representative, representative from their development. Once we confirm this and finalize the procedures, we will submit the DHCD for approval. And then in regards to the Mass Naro Conf Annual Conference, which just happened this past week, uh, myself and other Ho Arlington Housing Authority staff ended the Mass Naro annual conference. Um, one of the major themes within the conference was the pursuit of $450 million in state level ARPA money for housing authority capital needs across the Commonwealth. Um, I have added a link on our website to the video that Mass Narrow put together related to this. Uh, we will continue to advocate for this with our state senator and state representatives. Another theme was fair housing and other related requirements. As a result of this, I will be working on reviewing potentially updating some of our policies to present to the board related to this, which includes, but is not limited to fair housing, reasonable accommodations, and language access plan. Great, thank you, Jack. Any questions for Jack? Joanne? Yes, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, well, I'm very pleased that the Council on Aging is arranging the flu shot but this happens each time we still have Monotomy Manor. And I was wondering if the Department of Health might be able to assist with that. Flu shots are, are very important this year because um, the flu symptoms, first of all, mimic COVID. So they, but the other thing is that you can, if you have flu and get COVID, you get much sicker. So I remember, and Fiorella can talk to this, that. Last time, after a long time, when people went out and got their vaccines still, that some vehicle came to Monotomy Manor to give out vaccines, but most of that had been done. But I don't know what organization it was, but maybe we could possibly look into it. I don't know. Maybe Fiorella, do you have anything to say on this? Is she there? So, Joanne, can you actually, yeah, I am here. Um, I am a little confused on what it is that we're talking about, about the COVID vaccine situation. Um, the flu shots, um, Jack just announced, there have been arrangements or they have been done for all the senior residents. And my asking about how we might reach out to the Department of Health, someone to see if they could also, um, maybe on site, 
have someone give flu shots in an anatomy manner. It's very important this year because flu symptoms mimic COVID, but also right. they can mingle and you become much, uh, much more ill. So that's my question. I remember last time at some point there was some vehicle that came in to give vaccines. But by that time, most people had had them. And I was wondering if you remember what organization might have done that. I do not. I do. They weren't doing it out of the vehicle. They were doing it in the lab skills center. Um, mm -hmm. I do not know what company it was that did it. So perhaps um, Jack can follow up and talk to the uh, public health department here in Arlington because I know they've done it in the past. So um, out in, in is it something that. Yeah. Hey, you can go right into this. What's it? I, I'll, I mean, go ahead, Jack. I'll follow up with the uh, director of the health of health and human services to yep. see what what options we have and what we did last year. Yep. Okay. Hey, thank Great. you. Great. Uh, any other questions for Jack from the board members? Okay, let's move into the laundry service proposal. Uh, number four, Jack. So in, in, in your board packet, um, I didn't, there were, there were a lot of other um, paperwork related to, you know, the components and some other pretty um, small details, but the most important information I did provide was the actual percentages and they gave us two options. Um, one option was 65% of the gross income collected from each machine, uh, less clothing claims and refunds. And the other option um, was 50% of the gross income collected from each machine, less clothing claims and refund, but um, they would pay us $15,000 to purchase the existing equipment. Um, based off of, you know, just, just looking at the math, it looks like the 65% option would be, um, over time would be the better option. And then, you know, we would have the option to extend that for another five years. And then um, I can provide some, some other details just related to it. So when they, so um, they will, they'll have the machines on site when which uh, residents will be able to reload laundry cards. So they won't be actually sticking a credit card into the machine. It'll be an actual card that they'll load funds onto. In the buildings, they would um, be able to load, you know, actual cash. Into, into the machine and put it on, on the card. And if they wanted to use a credit card, they'd go on the automatic laundry website and they'd be able to do it that way. Um, they said that there's a lot of difficulties in actually having the credit card do it on site. So the, the cash to load onto the card and then the um, credit card to do that online. Um, it would be, so every resident would get a card up front, uh, but one of the, the items within it would be that if a resident was to lose that card, they would have to pay, it would be a $5 charge uh, for a new card. Um, so, I mean, that's, they said that there's some, some options that we could consider with that. Um, they could either provide the, the um, they could provide that card at, at the machine. So they'd be able to get the mission, get the card right there, you know, or cards could be available that just at the office, or we could do a hybrid of both um, to ensure that residents have have access to these replacement cards. And then uh, they'll be doing, you know, extensive preventative maintenance, um, which will include but not be limited to bank cleaning, you know, following up with the machines to ensure they're they're, you know, they're working as intended and properly. They, if there is a service request, um, the the service will will respond to it within 16 business hours. And, and as it indicated in the actual proposal, um, if, if a resident does, you know, if, if they do, you know, request a refund and they're granted that refund, that would come out of our 65%. Same as if there was damage done to a resident's clothing, um, that refund would come out of our 65%. Not sure. So Jack, Jack, are they, and I know we've only got the one sheet here in our packet. So do I understand they're going to put um, two washers, two dryers in each facility, brand new machines? They're going to they're going to replace every machine that exists in the in the buildings right now. So it's it's dependent upon on the building. So um, I can actually look at the. 
So for instance, at, at Chestnut Manor, there's currently four washers and four dryers. So they would replace four washers and four dryers yep. and one card station. So every building would get, card, every development would get a card station and they would, we would replace the exist, they would replace the existing machines. And so I don't understand this, the difference between option A and B. Uh, option A, simple, they put new machines there, we get 65% of the split. Yep. And with a five-year renewal. This is a five-year contract with a five-year renewal, I assume. Option yep. B, what's the $15,000 for option B mean? They would pay us for the existing machines on site. So like the machines that are already in the, um, in the laundry facilities, they would pay us for them instead of just removing them. They would pay us and replace them? Yeah. They would pay us and replace them. And what's the split after that? 50. 50. 50. Okay. So do we have any idea? Do you have any numbers on? Oh on yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. I didn't give you that context. So we're, so on, like a, like a three-year average that we had came out to about $60,000 that we were able to, um, to earn, you know, per, per year. So, I mean, so that, that's what I used. Um, okay. So yes, so you're saying it, we would do better financially to go for the 65%. Yeah, six, 65% each year of $60,000 is going to be better in, in the um, overall. Long, yeah. Long. And the machines that we have, they all work, correct? They, well, I mean, they've, they've, they've been worn out, you know, considerably over the, over the past months, but um, they are working. I mean, whether or not some of them are going to break down tomorrow, I'm not sure. So would you go back to them and say, listen, we want you to buy the machines, give us, you know, 10 grand, something to get rid of them. So we don't have to pay to get rid of them. We're not going to pay to get rid of them. So that that's, that's part of the proposals that they would, you know, take, they're going to take the machines one way or the other. Okay. So option A is they keep our machines, pay us 65%. Yeah. Option B is they pay us 15 grand for the machines and we get 50% of the split. Yes. Based on your evaluation, you think financially overall we do better with option A, right? That's, that's my, yeah, that's how I okay. think. Does anybody have any questions to that? Yeah, I have one. Is well, um, who, 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 who maintains the machines? They do, right? The they new do. Ones? Yes. So, so we don't do it. Okay. Makes sense. So, it's, so that's the, the benefit of going with the service is that, you know, all service calls, all repairs, preventative maintenance. It all goes through them. Any any issues related to refunds, um, damage to clothing, it all goes to them. And if someone loses their card, who does it go to? Our people or their people? Their people. Seems like a no-brainer. Is there any movement though in the card? I mean, they charge them five bucks for a replacement card. Is, I mean, it's a lot. Um, so I mean, so we went back and forth. I mean, the benefit of having them to having the card available in the machine. Is that you know if it's uh, if it's over the weekend and somebody loses their card, they'll be able to replace the card immediately. Okay. Uh, but I mean, we could also um, consider you know purchasing uh, X number of cards for the housing authority, um, and, and you know maybe providing them at a reduced rate or whatever we want to do. Um, how do how do they load up money on this card? So they would put cash into the machine, like as if um, I guess. You know, I, I keep thinking of like a casino or something like that, but like an yeah. arcade. So you go in, you load the cash into the machine, and then you know, and then you, then you would load, and it would load on to the card. I see. And there's no way of using a credit card for this. They don't have that type of a device. You can use a credit card, but it, that part has to be done online. So you'd log into the website, um, and then you'd be able to use the credit card online. They said that they had too many difficulties doing it on site. Um, related to Wi-Fi, and I think there's been a lot of requests for refunds related to the spottiness of the of the device. Whether or not yes. that's something that might be possible in the future, um, I'm not sure. But that that was the proposal, at least. And does this cash machine accept all denominations one, five, ten, twenty? That, you know? That's a good question. I would assume so, but um, that's that's a really good question. I can confirm that. Yeah, I would just wonder if, you know, if you're going to do a wash for two bucks, yeah, you know, is it only going to take a $20 bill or can you put in two bucks, you know? Yeah. I think that's not that that's a deal breaker, but I think it's just something. 
And have you contacted any of the other clients that this outfit services to get any feedback on them? Yes, I was able to speak to quite a few, um, even at the conference. And, you know, everybody, um, they spoke very highly. They included some references with their proposal. Um, I believe Malden was one. Um, I know Winchester's been pleased with them. Um, uh, hey, Jack, as part of the service contract, a part of the maintenance, who cleans the machines? They will. They will? On how often? They they have a they have their own um, preventive maintenance plan. As far as how often, you know, they clean. I'm, I'm I, I'd have to I'd, I'd have to look into it a little bit more detail to give you that. Yeah. But they do. But they, they do. But they do, they do have, a, have an extensive preventative maintenance plan. Okay, cool. Now I don't suppose there's any reimbursement for the water that we're using or the electricity or the gas, right? No. It's just it's just sixty five percent of what they of the gross. Is that what it is? Sixty five percent of the gross. Yeah, and of course our system isn't such that we could put our finger on exactly what we're spending for water and right. get right now. I mean, it's a five year. Five year. It, the five, five year. year. Contract. Is there any way to get out of it? Is there any way to get out? Um. I'll, I'll work with John Greco on the uh, the terms in the contract. We haven't actually, you know, I wanted to wait till this until we we actually sign the contract. So I'll, I'll work with John Greco to win, just to ensure that the uh, it, the terms in the contract are favorable. How many customers? You know how many customers they have? It's in here. Let me find it. Okay, John. Sorry. Hey, um, do we need to vote on this tonight? That was my question. So, John Greco, do we need, is this a bid type thing that we have to go out to bid? I wouldn't think so because we're not actually spending money, right? We, no, we, we, did, we did go they out. Did a bid. They, they did a bid for this. They did a, 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 a 30B, 30B outreach on this. So they did a 30B proposal on this. Okay. So then all we have to do is vote on this tonight. And we could we could certainly take a vote that, you know, the final contract is, is agreeable by John Greco, the attorney. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so do we have any other questions? I mean, is it something that can be tabled for next time just to find out all this other information, just make a better, you know, more educated vote out of it? Has, has it ever, is it a thing, I don't know, to consider like purchasing the machines and since the water bill would be coming out of the housing authority anyways. Could that money be invested and would it be more helpful or is it 65% well, just smarter in that sense? I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we were paying for the water and the electricity and the gas. So it's, you know, it's kind of a wash through here. Um, however, we're going to lose, you know, a, a percentage of those $2 bills, which is not much given the fact that we're going to get all brand new equipment given the fact that they're going to manage it and fix it. And I'm sure there's going to be parameters in that contract, just like you said, they have to be there within so many hours and so forth. So, yeah. Um, so the positives certainly outweigh the negatives, but not that there is a negative. You know, Jack having the, the option to talk to the other housing authorities and, and the self didn't seem like there were any negatives. So I, I don't, I don't think there's a need to table it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the need is just to make sure that the contract provisions are acceptable to our attorney, you know? Yeah, they, they, I don't have an exact number of the, how, how many housing authorities they provide, but it's an extensive number. Um, you know, I'd say at least 50 plus housing authorities. He had told me the number at one point, you know, it might even close, be close to 100 housing authorities. Um, but I do, you know, uh, you know, I spoke with individuals at the conference and then I also have um, references from Springfield Housing Authority, Fall River Housing Authority. Um, and so I, it, it looks like it's going to be a, a great partnership. Um, one of the things that will be, you know, that, that'll be a positive, we'll have a service that's dedicated to um, if, if a resident's having issues with the, with the machine, um, ensuring that proper preventive maintenance is happening on the machines um, and ensuring that residents do have a fast, quick action to get refunds and other types of service requests related to it. And as well as that, is that right now our machines are quarter op operated. 
And in order to convert them to a card machine option, it would be, um, you know, an extensive cost to the housing authority. I don't have that those figures in front of me at this point, um, but that would be um, an additional, you know, cost to retrofit those machines to be able to do that. Yeah. Is this just senior housing tech? No, this would include Minuteman too, right? There's two two machines on a Minuteman. It would be for the, the whole portfolio, so it would be, for, it would be it would, for, yeah, they, they, would, they would be, you know, managing machines at every site. Um, they'd be managing the seat, the machines at Minotomy Manor at the Life Skills Center. Okay. Um, they'd be managing at Drake Village, Winslow Towers, Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace. Right. That's great. So I'll make a, my, my only question. Um, if we were to purchase the cards, that if they were to lose, it would be five dollars. Would we receive it at a at a less amount to, to make it more affordable, or would we also be just paying the five dollars ourselves and then giving it out in case of emergency? I I believe it's going to be five dollars a card, and um, gotcha. I, I can talk more with the service representative on that to see if there is any sort of wiggle room, but. I believe it is five dollar five dollars a card, but they um, but they will also be providing us. I believe um, I think it's nine hundred cards up front um, as part of just the, the kickoff for the project. So um, we, we will have an excess up front. Which where are they located? Out. Where are they located, Jack? So that's something that we'll be we'll be figuring out with them. The best, ideally, they'll be located within the laundry rooms by uh, themselves. Um, no, I mean the company itself. Where they located? They are out of. And, and while he's they're local, I just gotta. I guess. Yeah, that's okay. They're local. Think, but they're local. That's fine. Well, he's <laughs> while he's while he's while he's looking that up. I just want to add that this these machines are voluntary. I mean, tenants don't have to use these machines. Right. They can, they can go to other laundry centers if they want. So they're, they're voluntary use. Their, their headquarters is in uh, West Newton, Mass. Okay. That's close. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So do we need a vote to move this along? Do we have a motion? I I, I would move to uh, accept the laundry services proposal uh, from what's it called automatic laundry services um, yes. in in uh, the sixty five percent option. Based on a review by John. Based on a review by John Greco for the con with the contract. Okay, to a second. I'll second that. Okay, we have a roll call. I'll, um, roll call Fiorella. Yes. Uh, Joanne. Yes. Nick. Yes. Gar. Yes. And Brian is a yes. Okay, so we're moving forward with that. Um, when can they start check? So that's that's the you know it's it's good for us to be able to get this moving because they yeah. you know there's um there's some some backups in the supply chain so I mean we were hoping ideally beginning of November but you know it could be mid to late November um, given their projections which is unfortunate but uh, the reality of the market. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, number five uh, approval for a certificate of substantial completion, Drake. Cottage building exterior renovations. Um, Jack. So I uh, so I I worked with the superintendent of maintenance, Roland Demers, um, and Chris Potridge, the maintenance foreman on site, and they indicated that uh, with the help of the arch well through the architect Abacus, um, that the uh, the contractor has <laughs> the punch list associated uh, with this um, this part of the project. So. By getting this, then you know I'll be able to update that, and then they'll be able to move forward. Great. So, do we need a motion for this? Yes. Do we have a motion for this one? I can, I I would move to uh, accept that proposal certificate of substantial completion for DHCD project number O one O O nine six. A second. <laughs> second by Joanne. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote, uh, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Ryan is yes. Now we move on to number six. 
Uh, actually, we're gonna, I've been asked to table this one. Um, we're going to table number six, um, and we can get back to it at a future uh, meeting. Uh, moving to number seven, um, approval of submission of community uh, CPA preliminary application for Mononymy Manor window replacement project. Jack. So, so this is the pre preliminary application. We don't need, um, you know, any real supporting documentation at this point. But so, just to make sure that we are able to um, submit our our, our prelim preliminary application before the deadline of October 18th, um, I wanted to present to the board. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of um, unknowns related to the exact cost of the project and things like that, and us uh, moving forward with some other, you know, very um, necessary um, aspects related to that. But um, I did want to get get it moving. Um, I provided the um, the preliminary preliminary application in the board packet um, for for board members to review. Um, if if we are selected for this project, we would need the additional documentation in December, which I anticipate us having. And Jack, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've already got DCHD moving on this um, with the engineers coming out to, to look at the windows um, and to start moving this thing forward, right? That's correct. I've been in contact with the HCD. Um, there's one aspect that I need to finish on my end, and then they'll be able to, um, to do that for us. When when do you anticipate they might come? I'm I'm not entirely sure. I hope within the next month to be able to. I hope before the next board meeting they'd be able to give us some more um, clarification. Yeah, because it's very hard to have when we have no formal estimate to keep talking to people. Um, I had a, a couple of things. Um, uh, Nick graciously let me replace him on the CPA committee, and I've been doing some training. Um, so I just wanted to add a few things to the application. Of course, the Drake Village one, you have much more concrete information about since we don't. But uh, one thing I was told um, for the Monotony Manor, Manor one is um, we're in a category of a preservation under community housing, but only preservation for complicated reasons. So we should mention preservation as often as possible, which I think you have in your, your, um, you have in your application. The other thing is um, they asked for a, a time, I don't have one. So I asked during the training and they said, maybe at the end you could put, it's in the planning stage, probably for both of them, right? It's in the planning stage. And I also wanted to ask, um, I mean, the windows in our house are older, and as far as I know, they're not going to fall out. I, I thought also that the sills or the what holds the windows in place is older than 1985. That, I, can, I can confirm that. The windows themselves are listed in the system. Yeah. Because I had two people come from the town to look at the gardens and so forth, and they said, "Oh, the windows look new, but the sills and the whatever you call the frames are not." So that might be important to put in the when we yeah. find out more. Okay. okay. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Oh, can I ask you a, qu a few questions? Sure, go ahead. I was going to ask how old the existing windows are, but I think that was answered. 1985, you think? Was either 85 or 86? I, um, I'd have to check. The 85 on your proposal. And, and then how did you come up with the four to six million total cost? So that was based off of our, our maintenance staff um, understanding estimate. what they thought. Yeah, that was their estimate. And you know, hope, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get a much better realistic estimate uh, very soon. And then my last question is, um, is does it include doors too? No. This does not include doors. Um, okay. I kind of thought that, but I figured I'd ask. Oh, but one of the things, um, you know, we'll be able to consider too is, you know, depending upon how much the cost of the windows and related components end up coming out to, um, if it's under what we anticipated for our own estimates, um, maybe for these additional funding sources, we'll we'll be able to maybe even look at expanding the project. Hmm. And I guess I have one more question about air conditioners. There is, are these going to windows going to be? Oh, 
able to um, install air conditioners. They would have to. to. I assume they will. I mean, I think that that's something that would have to look into with the architect and, and make sure that that's um, you know a, a design feature that you know would would be a high priority. Yeah, I just don't want to ruin a, a bunch of new windows with air conditioners. Yes. Um, I had a question. Often, um, like in our basement, when you start these projects, you run into asbestos. Is that likely to happen at Minardi Manor? Because the buildings are quite old. And that would be more costs. And I, and I think that that's you know, where um, that high cost came from. Um, is our oh. staff anticipating some of the abatement that would be involved with the project? It's typically um, the caulking around the window. If it's that old, it would, would potentially have asbestos in it. So as simple as it is, it's small, but it would be costly to remove. One more question. What, oh, is, the, what is the holdup in getting an appraisal? Is there any way to do it um, more quickly? I think. So the, the whole the holdup with the study is that we, we were still waiting on the state to approve our annual plan. Um, and, and that I, I believe that just got um, that just got done maybe even on Friday this past week. And and so that was the that was the holdup with the study. And then the holdup um, with the engineers from the state coming out is um, I just need to take I need to take a more uh, detailed look at the um, in this system called CPS, which actually has the components and, and some of the items related to it to make sure that it's all listed correctly so that they can compare that to the actual market rates and do any other necessary work. So I, that's something that's a high priority for me. Um, I, was, I didn't realize that was something I would need to do. So, it's, um, so I'll be doing that in the next day or so. Good, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on this one? So we need a motion to... Uh... Approve this so he can uh, submit it. So moved. Thank you, Nick. Second by. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Carr? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Good job, Jack. Uh, that brings us to number eight. Same thing with a CPA uh, application, but this is for the Hauser building roof replacement project. Jack, comment? And, and this one is, you know, hopefully where we want to look. You know, there's, there's some more concrete data like Joanne had indicated related to this yes. project because um, the state engineers and some of that, um, that has already happened to at least a degree. Um, I think that, you know, it hasn't been looked at since, you know, before the pandemic. So we're also going to have to look at that to see if those numbers are going to increase, which I'm, I'm sure they will. Um, but that's, you know, we, we have a better understanding of the scope and, and hopefully the potential cost for that project. And, and it does, um, it does, it does seem to meet the, the, um, the intent of community preservation acts, preservation uh, component. Okay. So we need a motion for this as well. Yes. Yep. Nick, was that you? No, uh, that was Gar. I'll second it though. Okay. Uh, so God moved it, seconded it. Um, all in favor, uh, Fiorella? Yes. Win? Yes. Nick? Yes. Uh, Gar and Brian was a yes. Uh, that one moves forward. Now we're on to number nine, integrative pest management update. So, um, in regards to the integrative pest management update, um, we took some of our first, um, I, I would call both reactionary and preventative um, measures at the Hauser building. So we were able to do an inspection and treatment for the entire building last week. Um, through that process, we were able to have property managers and maintenance staff on site to ensure that we had a good understanding of any any um, any issues within resident in, in in units or in the building as a whole, so that we can hopefully you know focus on those moving forward um, and provide education as needed uh, related to um, staff or um, you know even even the residents as a whole to, to how we can work together. Um, in regards to um, I think in the last meeting I had spoken about 
conversation I had with Christine Buongiorno, the Director of Health and Human Services. I had spoken with her briefly again this past week, um, and she indicated that there is an individual that they have identified to hopefully help, help, help us with this. Um, <laughs> however, um, you know, given, given how busy they are with a lot of different things, I, you know, we still need to set up um, um, some dates to, to talk more um, definitive details on how we're going to move forward together. Okay. Any questions for Jeff? Great. Uh, number 10, the Monotony Manor Tenant Association elections. Jack, can you bring everybody up to board um, on the events of the election? So the election happened, um, let's see, was it, the, was it the 15th, I believe? Uh, I think September, so. Wednesday, September 15th. Um, Jack, Jack Cooper from Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants uh, oversaw the election with the um, with the assistance of the uh, We Women's Voters, I was able to provide some them some assistance in um, verifying uh, residents to ensure that they were um, eligible to vote. Which the um, the only requirements for that is that they're over the age of eighteen and are in fact a resident of Monterey Manor. Um, could be any member of the household, whether you're the head of household um, or another member of the household. So I was able to do that. Um, there was I believe there were seventy one individuals that voted, so it was a great turnout. Um, and really a testament to the great work that they did down there. Um, that's a, that percentage is you know probably better than any of the uh, local voting that happens in the area. So um, some great kudos kudos to them on on that. Um, in regards to the election results, we we did receive the results from the Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants, um, and the election results that were indicated to us are that Jen Hernandez uh, was elected president. Vanessa Roselle was elected vice president. Marta Cayarga was elected co-vice president. Lisa Hersey, uh, secretary, and Marianne uh, Roselle as treasurer. Great, and, and, that's and so fantastic. What, and, and, what, uh, and also just one other thing was uh, Jack Cooper did indicate to me that the next step in their process for him as they, before they can, um, they can get actually certified by the board would be that they would uh, draft their, their bylaws. So he'll be working with them on that. So um, once they've done that, I believe then they can, you know, request to be certified by the board. Great. That's good news. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to everybody that helped out with that process. It was a long. Thanks for managing that. Way to go, Joanne. Yeah. Long coming. Be yeah. um, Number eleven. Approval of minutes. Uh, special meeting seven twelve twenty one. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at those? And if so, do we have a motion to approve them? Yeah, I, I move to approve the special meeting minutes of 712. Wait a second. Second that. Second by Fiorella. Um, roll call, Nick. You're on mute, dude. Nick? Yes. Uh, Gar? Yes. Duane? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Ryan's a yes. Number 12, approval of the executive session minutes from 7 12 2021. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Oh, sorry, Fiorella. So, so, motion moved by Fiorella, second by Nick. Uh, yep. Votes. Uh, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And that passes. And number 13, approval of the regular meeting minutes of 8-25-2021. Motion to approve. Second by... Second. So moved by... Second by Gar. Uh, roll call vote, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Now we go on to appointments. Um, I just want to make a note. Anybody in the general public um, interested in speaking for our um, guidelines, please send me a chat directly to me, um, to Brian Connor, and give me your name, your address, and the subject matter to speak on. So if you wish to speak publicly, 
uh, before the board, you'd have to do that. Uh, thus far, I have no chats. So let's go to local tenant organizations. Um, Jen on, Jen Hernandez, I see in Lillian Hernandez is on Jack. Yeah, she is. Um, let me call and allow her to talk. Hey, Brian, someone said they can't select you on the uh, on the chat. Jack, can you fix that? It's uh, it, I'm I'm trying to work on it. I can't I can't a lot. I'll have to look into that after. But what they can do is they can send it to the panelists, which I've already indicated. So it would be just um, just the board plus uh, John Greco and myself. <coughs> Oops. Here she okay. is. Is that a is that a feature on my my end of it here, Jack? Did you say again? Is that is that a feature that I have to enable here on my end? Good. Right. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Can you, no. Jack? Can uh, you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, Jen Hernandez okay. is is on. Um, but but if they send it to the send it to the panelists, it would just be um, myself, you, the board, and John Greco. Okay, we'll see if we can figure that out. So let's have um, Jen Hernandez, welcome on board and thank you for volunteering and, and thank you to everybody down there who elected you. Um, typically on our meetings here, our board meetings, um, we allow the presidents of the associations to speak um, and uh, more on, on, a, on a broad matter. And we ask that the, the presidents don't get into the details of the needs of the facility. That happens during the meetings with the, the maintenance staff. Uh, there's a particular meeting every month where you folks meet directly with the maintenance staff and the executive director. And, and that's where you can bring up anything to do with maintenance issues or, or needs or things like that. Uh, you know, anything at this meeting is more on a broad brush. Um, and um, um, we do allow you, we allow you to speak. We don't limit your time. Um, so if you have, I know you just started, and I know you're working on your, your board meeting, uh, bylaws and so forth. But if you'd like to say, we would love to hear it. So go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Um, thank you very much. First, I wanted to say how thrilled I am to have been elected, and I will represent Menominee Manor and its residents to the best of my ability. Secondly, um, I want to thank all of the residents of Menominee Manor who came out to vote. It was a great turnout, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, a special thank you to Rachel, Alicia, Lisa, and Jack Cooper, along with the others who helped get the Menominee Manor Tenant Organization um, started again. We're excited to get going uh, on the bylaws and will be rec and be recognized by the board, hopefully next month. Um, and next month, I hope to have a full report to bring to you all. Great, great. In, in, in the meantime, feel free to reach out to any of the board members or, or Jack or, or maintenance staff or even myself. Um, have any questions or need any advice to get up and running and uh, we we truly look forward to your participation here in the future I, I certainly will and we look forward to working with all of you great thanks thank you um moving on to winslow is pam on jack yes pam hauser would you like to say anything yes i would um thank you very much um first of all i think the housing authority especially the office workers need to give a big thank you to the workers that put these windows in. They are fantastic. They've been cordial. They've been polite. They've been great. And they've been very friendly. And barring the problems with the weather, which we have had no control over, everything went smooth. And I want to thank the, wish the Housing Authority would give them a great big thank you from us there. Um, second of all, we got the Moderna shot. And I know it hasn't been approved yet, but Jack, if you could work with us for the help that when the Moderna um, booster is available, that they come out and give it to us here. And next on my list is, um, are we going to get our money this year for the Tenants Association? Second, um, we need to know the status of Christmas parties very soon. So if we can have one, we can, go around and start calling caterers. And uh, going back to the window problem here, I know there are other priorities within the housing authority, namely windows down at Monotomy Manor and roof problems with Chestnut and also the housing building. 
But we have 44 apartments here in this building that did not get windows. The, the apartments that are back, pushed back in on the balconies. And I get a lot of complaints from the people in those, win, those apartments. How come we're not getting anything? And I just want to throw out that maybe something could come up within a year that money might be going in to get those people the new windows or not. But, and I've been getting a lot of questions. Jack, you've been doing one fantastic job and everybody loves you in that position, but they wanna know the status of John Griffin, if he's coming back or if he's not coming back. It's been well over the three months since his last extension and they'd like to know that. So if you people could get back to me about that, I would greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you very much for your time. And I appreciate the way the meetings are being run now. Thank you. Great, thank you, Pam. Um, I don't see uh, Sharon from Chestnut or Mike from Cusack. Do you see them, Jack? No, and I think if I remember somebody was going to speak on behalf, some, there was somebody else from Cusack, was it um, Ellen Lee or, um, I, I, it, yes. I, I, I don't see her on the call either. I don't see her on the call either, all right. Um, and I don't have any general public issues here. I, Questions? Um, I did receive um, a request from a couple individuals, Brian. I, I'm not sure if you want me to just send you, forward them to you in the chat. Yes, forward them to me, please. And, and there were some, some comments in the chat, but I'm not really sure if they were requesting to be recognized. No, I read them. Uh, so the only one I'm seeing here is, is from Mr. Ward, is that correct? That seems to be the only one requesting. Yeah, the only one. And, and I think, I, unfortunately, uh, we've discussed this over and over and over. He wants to comment on the tenant board member selection process which is past tense, it was done by the selectmen, not this board. So I, I really don't see any need to rehash over and over. Um, so um, if Mr. Ward, if, if there's anything more pertinent, feel free to reach out to myself or Jack, uh, but I, I don't think there's a need to rehash this. It's, it's been done. The tenant uh, board member is Fiorella and um, we're very pleased with the participation. So um, uh, barring nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Second. Second, my guy. All right, thank you. Oh, we need a roll call. Um, Nick? Yes. Garv? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Fiorella? Yeah. All right, great. Uh, we look forward to working with the new president and getting the other presidents up on board uh, very, very soon. And. Um, Thank you all your hard work, Jack. Keep it up. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Thanks Jack. Thanks, everybody. Meeting adjourned. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.